we go. Um, so I'm going to share my screen. Ah, make sure I get the right screen. All right, thanks for joining us on uh, Monday, October the 12th. This is your project for the week, so make sure you follow along. Ask any questions. If you have any questions, make sure you email me at smartinas at psd1.org or remind at me at nhhsar. Um, so by now, if you've you checked your email, you would have seen the pacing guide, but it's also on your Canvas page. If you click on that latest announcement, you'll see that at the very bottom, <clears throat> excuse me, for week seven, it says contemporary artist project. I'll explain what contemporary means pretty soon, but this is like where the most benefit comes from being in my class is you don't just create art just to make something pretty. You, you make art. So next time you see an art piece at a coffee shop at, uh, at the city hall or anywhere that you happen to be and people were like what the heck is that why is that art you could be like hey like something like this once or i can tell you maybe why it might be art all right <clears throat> here's your first martinez minute um, what i want to explain is that art piece this is a piece done by felix gonzalez torres and it is called entitled a portrait of ross in la um it is a piece consisting of a gigantic stack of candy in a corner of a gallery or art space. Um, he's done it numerous times. What it is, is it's an invitation for you to swing by and grab a piece of candy. And at times, handfuls get taken away. Over a course of a day, 10, 20, 30, 40 pounds of candy might go away. Um, well, now let's talk about why it's called a portrait. Um, this piece is meant to re represent... <clears throat> uh, Felix's lover who died of AIDS and the start is 172 pounds just like 172 pounds of candy um, it's sitting there and it's happy you know candy brings joy candy brings happiness some euphoria when you're eating candy like a sugar high and and although people are getting to enjoy this candy one bit at a time um, every time you do get to enjoy it is is another minute lost another pound lost, another another pound lost, 10 pounds lost. And so it meant it's meant to depict uh, the battle of AIDS and how <clears throat> people just wither away slowly but surely, even if they are, you know, this bundle of sweetness and bundle of love and joy that the candy represents. So over time, it just dwindles down to nothing. And that's what he wanted to depict is just the loss of something so amazing, so, something that's supposed to bring you endless joy. Um, and here is... Uh, you know, his lover just disappearing slowly but surely, even though um, some people are not aware of it and how detrimental it is to take another little piece away. But, uh, you know, so, so that's contemporary art. It's allowing your, your, your viewer to understand something completely in a unique way. Um, it doesn't have to be with paint. It doesn't have to be with pencil. It doesn't have to be with sculpture. It can be with candy as long as you can explain yourself well. Well, you have contemporary art. Thank you. That was your Martinez Minute. Being able to explain yourself to others, even even if it's something that seems pretty out there and far-fetched, uh, like over time, you should be able to explain yourself a little bit more thoroughly and be able to try to put yourself in the artist's shoes. And that's what this, this project is all about. So now we've seen what the announcement says and that that's the only assignment for the week. Um, it is likely to take you this entire week so let me know if you need more information over time so you're going to find this project at the very bottom of your canvas um, this is a student view so it shouldn't look anything different and let me explain what it is this first tabulation right here it's just so this is the seg section there's nothing no information on there or it says what is the research project we're going to click on that in just a minute it's going to come in two parts Part one, which is these three components, artist research, artist research, excuse me, research. And then part two, which is a choice to pick one of these two. I highly recommend bottom one, bottom one, you're gonna get your option pretty soon and I will explain what those options are. All right, so let's start with the beginning here. Simply put, this research project is 
in two, two parts. Part one, which is the research notes, and part two, which is the essay or virtual gallery. You'll get your choice of either one. If you're a strong writer and you don't feel like some, doing something digital, then writing is going to be your option. If you want to do something digital, I'll show you what that is and how fun that might be. I feel like someone's drawing on my uh, screen. Someone drawing on my screen? Yeah, I feel like someone's annotating my screen. It's all good. All right. Um, so part one, artist notes. You're gonna, uh, the steps are below this black rectangle. You'll be able to see like all of the individual steps. Um, I'm going to share my screen pretty soon here to show you what I'm doing in regards to that in just a minute. Uh, haven't gone too far. I just kind of started just to, so, so I could have a, like a little um, starting point for you guys to see. All right. So what you're doing here is you're going to be shopping around from a list of 36 artists that I've selected from worldwide um, points of view. These people come from different um, ethnicities, backgrounds, stories. If you can come up with your own, that is fine too. I just want it to be someone world renowned that's uh, that's kind of a staple in, in in the sense that they're known around the world for what they do, or at least in the artist realm. Um, um, art is in a in a unique position right now in in uh, the internet, where it's becoming more and more popular or more part of the mainstream. Um, and I'll actually describe that in a little bit more detail pretty soon too. So it says review the slideshow below or you can download it by clicking this button here. It says choose an artist to research and critique. So here's your choices of artists, all 36 of them. You're gonna be filling a full sketchbook page with notes with the artist that you choose. So here we go. Yeah, I'm gonna like briefly describe what this is. Here, Bisa Butler from New Jersey. And if you wanna find out more about this artist, you can click on their name right here. It's, it's hyperlinked. Some, some of these hyperlinks are articles. Some of them are YouTube videos. Uh, so depending on uh, the artist and how much information there is on them, you can find out more about them. Kehinde Wiley, very famous. Um, one of his most notable pieces of art right now that Columbus statues are being brought down um, in, in all sorts of cities, like in uh, CDMX, uh, Mexico City, they just took down the Christopher Columbus bronze statue. Uh, Candy Wiley has a pretty unique bronze sculpture um, to respond to all of those Confederate bronze sculptures from his community. Um, so I, I highly recommend checking him out. And then you have some a Japanese artist, uh, Syrian artist, you have uh, Saner from LDF, you got some Veracruz, you got some people from Canada, Brooklyn, uh, so, so people from all shapes, sizes, and, and stories. Sharina Shot, which is someone I learned about in college. Uh, and I'm just going to click on this so you can get a sneak peek. A Chicano artist by the name of Frank Romero, if you don't know his work, it's, it's pretty brilliant and it captures um, LA mainly in the 70s and 80s. A Yemenese artist here, Cuban American, ER. So all of these artists, the reason why I've selected them is because they are, most of them are still alive and most of them created artwork in the last 10 to 20 years. That makes them new. It's, it's kind of like learning new music versus taking a class where you learn about music that was created 100, 200, 300 years ago. Um, it's more pertinent to today, their stories and their ideas. Here's Tino Aranda, my, my uh, close friend, but he's also making waves in Seattle, Tacoma, Portland, and LA. Actually just saw him last week or two weeks ago. Uh, but it's in Zimbabwe, an artist, Cuban. North Carolina, Mexican, Ghana, Ghanese, uh, from England, Japan. Again, it's a variety, a huge variety of artists. They are. And I'm gonna show you a couple more here. So this painter paints people viewing famous paintings right here. So like uh, Paris Rainy Day and the guitarist by Picasso. 
Justin Bua, which was one of my hit heroes growing up. Nick Cave, one of my more recent heroes. Yayo Kuzama, Ai Weiwei. Robin Road, who you might have learned about by now. Banksy. And then Banksy's the last one. All right, so out of those, again, I really hope that you, like, click on their name and try to find out a little bit more about them before you decide whether you want to do something about them or not or, like, research them a little bit more thoroughly. Next step. So I'm going to stop sharing screen. Hi, guys. Um, so the next thing you're going to do – whoops staple coming apart in my sketchbook and every time I brush off some uh, eraser shreddings I keep getting myself all right so the next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna start doodling and you're gonna take up an entire sheet of sketchbook paper so it's just an entire frame up oh, there you go and what you're gonna do is you're gonna try to draw out three to four references um, about that artist so if it's like if they live in New York you could draw out a little city of New York if, uh, if it's an art piece that you want to draw of theirs, you can try to recreate it in sketch form. It doesn't have to be a finished work of art. You don't have to spend an hour on it. I highly recommend doing things that take you about 10 to 15 minutes maximum in terms of drawing something. Uh, for Justin Bua, so Justin Bua, do this DJ. It might have been what inspired me to become a DJ back in college. Oops. You were a DJ? Maybe. You know, he also drew a... a uh, he painted Kobe like the day he died, he painted a Kobe. Um, and also I just drew in the cityscapes that he's really famous for doing. If, you, if you've uh, watched Kendrick Lamar's uh, video, All the Stars, you'll notice that like, it feels like a Justin Bua painting once you see the kind of art that he's created. Um, so, so I still like, I love his style because he grew up in the 80s in New York in the the part of like what used to be like the hip hop scene when it was first like being born really. So he was a, he was a B-boy and a, uh, and a gra graffiti artist and it inspired his work, but it, it allowed him to kind of work his way up. He ended up going to Pasadena for college. He ended up teaching at USC uh, for about 10 years and now is a world renowned um painter like you can watch him on instagram he does these live shows where you can just watch him hey he, he uh he does these drawing battles with with other artists painters and actors and celebrities and it's pretty dope he actually tends to draw with both hands at the same time and it's really fun to watch him anyway so i captured justin bua I'm, i just sketched out some of his stuff um and i'm also going to be drawing somebody else here i just started doodling um the work of JR the artist. Now let me go back to sharing the screen. So you know what you want to capture. So besides drawing three to four drawings um, related to the artist of your choice, what you want to do is answer six questions within that page. You guys can see this, right? I just highlighted a bunch of questions, right? Yeah. Okay, thank you. All right, so it says who? So examples of who question. So when uh, I like to I like to relate this this to a news reporter who just showed up to a rollover car accident by a gas station, right? They don't say like, "Quick, give me some information," like with their microphone on when they approach, uh, you know, uh, people that witness the situation. They have these general ideas of what they're going to ask, and they're who, what, when, where, why, and how. I remember learning these like in fifth or sixth grade and I never forgot them for some reason. But they are really great questions to ask yourself when you're writing any kind of essay, any kind of report for any class. It's also, when I was, uh, when I was trying to break out of my shyness in college, trying to meet girls and I realized I wasn't, it wasn't the best conversation list, I actually would tap into this mindset. I'm like, okay, when I finally, you know, start talking to them, I'm going to come up with some who, what, when, or why, hows. And it got me to have conversations that were like hour and two hours long or whatever, however long I wanted to entertain a conversation. You just come up with some way better questions than how you doing, right? There's, there's better things to ask. So who, examples of who questions are like, who is the artist? Who inspired the artist? What, examples of questions for what are like, 
What is uh, Justin Bua doing today? Uh, what does he do during COVID? What mediums does he use? What is the topic that they create? Um, so questions that were like when questions are like, when did Justin Bua learn that he wanted to be an artist? Um, when did he, um, I, I don't know, just come up with some good, well, there, oh, I guess I have some examples. Like when did they begin creating art? When did they know their artwork was finished? Why? Examples of why questions are why do they do what they do? Why is their message so important? You know, why do they focus on uh, street art and graffiti or, or New York uh, hip hop scene? So where? Where do they come from? Where do they live? Are examples of where questions and how? How do they come up with ideas? How do they make, up, make their work? Um, so as, as a reporter, as you're witnessing or reading something, asking these questions helps you get the full picture of who that person is. The reason why you do that is if you look at art just to try to make sense of a painting or a drawing, most of the time you're not going to get it. When you're looking at contemporary art, you need to find out who these people are and where they come from. Understand them really as a person so you can understand their artwork. So what you're going to do is, when you, after you've watched the video or during the watching the video or reading the article, ask these questions. I'm not going to tell you exactly what to answer. I just want you to answer one of each. So in that journal around Justin Bua, you're going to write like, Justin Bua, let me, let me point my camera at it. So I'm at, trying to come up with some who, what, 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 how. So right down here, I just started writing Justin Bua is an Italian American born in the NY city area. I just answered who he is, right? Now what? So what, what does he paint? Um, he paints in the style of 1980s, 1990s hip hop mostly, but he does kind of incorporate other um, pop icon, iconography, etc. cetera, right? Uh, where? Um, it mostly, you know, it's, it's global. I mean, he, he focuses on not just one specific thing, mostly, most of it's New York City, but he does paint, you know, uh, Ruth Bader Ginsburg and Tupac and, and Rick and Morty. So it's, it's a little bit of everything. Um, why, how, and all the other questions. So you want to answer one of those questions throughout your little drawing. And then you move on to the next one. After you're done drawing things for two different artists and writing your who, what, when, where, why, how for each one of those artists, it's time to move on to the next step. If you don't have answers to those, you could also search up any additional information um, using Google, et cetera. Um, bup, 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 bup. And then lastly, what you wanna do is submit both of these via email or Padlet. Let's move on to the next. So here it's broken down into like the same steps, but it's telling you that you need to do one for each artist. So it's nothing new. I just wanted to remind you guys of what to do per artist. 